code. Thank God. After what I just said. All right. A living lamb, incense in solid form, Jesus of Nazareth. What do you think? Anybody see something in common? I have one, another, two, three. Well, the third one is iffy. Yeah, they're, all, they're all in the Bible. <laughs> but that would work. Anybody else? It's important to this class that you get this, so there's no need going forward until, actually, that's not true. That's what the class will be about. <coughs> okay. Um, the title of this session, <coughs> is The Importance of Burned Offering. <clears throat> the importance of burned offering. Um, what I want to discuss and get into and, and read some of my notes pertaining to is the fact that a living lamb, not Jesus the lamb, but a living lamb is not really something that God holds dear. You know, it's not like going to Ireland and seeing little lambs prance around in the fields, the green fields, and going, oh, my God, it's lambs. You know, God doesn't do that. He, didn't, you know, uh, he probably doesn't look at them as any different than a, live, a, a little wolf puppy. <laughs> See, do I know how to get in trouble or what? Um, and I'll explain why. And the same thing with the solid form of incense. The solid form incense for the altar of incense, which is what we've been discussing, by the way. <clears throat> it was, there was particular ingredients, which we're not going to get into that right now, but there, there were particular ingredients that were used to form the incense. And that formed it into a solid form. But again, the incense that blessed God's heart was not all of the sweet things that went into solid form incense. It was the incense that was lit, that was set on fire, that was burned. It was the lamb that was laid on an altar and slain. And Jesus of Nazareth, <clears throat> representing incense in solid form, Jesus of Nazareth, representing a living lamb, not yet slain, and uh, I think I have it here in my notes, but there was nothing eternal, and this is another one that's always so hard for people, but there was nothing eternal accomplished by the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth, and that's why, so listen to the rest of my sentence and don't stop on that and, and become a hater. <clears throat> and that is, Jesus had done so many miracles, and it says in chapter 12 of John, though he, though he had done so many miracles among them, yet they believed not in him. And we go, why not? Okay, and then we'll take it another step. We'll say, um, uh, because, we'll, we'll get more spiritual. We'll say, because um, uh, miracles are not meant to be the thing. They're not eternal in that sense. But in another sense, um, nothing is truly eternal until it's gone through death. 
and it's especially in relationship to, to Christ crucified. Moving from Jesus of Nazareth to becoming Christ crucified. Okay? Well, let me just read a little bit. In relationship to the incense and the altar of incense as a picture of Jesus, we discover an example of nothing being of eternal value until the Lord was crucified. Okay, so um, you can you can go down you can go down through the, all the battles that we have, all the things that we wrestle with, all the. I mean, I've dealt with this in church after church where I've been. You know, um, you know. Well, the the kids are getting the kids are worldly. Uh, the um, people in the congregation they um, they just you know. They won't forgive one another, or they're in sin. You know, some of them are in sin. Um, I can't even think. You know, some people are having problems with the devil. And if you take the time to go through, you find that through death, he destroyed him that had the power of death. That through death, he says, I am crucified unto the world, and the world is crucified unto me. That's what Paul said. That his victory over the world wasn't higher consecration. It was death. Uh, the old nature, sin, through death, and on and on. So many, so many areas that, that the, the average church member never takes into consideration and therefore wonders, probably wonders, why nothing eternal happens. I mean, if I was a pastor of a, of a nominal church, I would wonder, especially if I'd been that for as many years as I have here, I would wonder why no kids ever really get after the Lord and continue on and serve God. And, you know, you, and you see it in their lives, you know. Um, at best, it's, you know, you see them become nominal Christians themselves, or at worst, they leave God, or, or maybe not even are belligerent in that direction. They just don't really care in that direction. Um, it's not eternal, that's why. There's nothing eternal in just teaching or preaching or, or having skits or any of that stuff. Death, death. That's, that's, the beauty, that's the beauty of the puppet ministry. Really, the puppet's dead. It's not alive. <laughs> and it's got another life inside of it, you know. I mean, there's some, there's some wonderful things to be found in, in certain realities, but... You know, our mind is going, no, no, it's the ministry, or not just that ministry, but it's the ministry, and there's power in the ministry, and God will bless my ministry. And usually the only death that some, when they even hear it, they embrace the death of the old man, which in a certain sense is not them. You know, Paul didn't say the old man is crucified with Christ. He did say that over in Romans 6, but in Galatians 2.20, he said, I am. And, um, <clears throat> you know, having removed an old nature in Romans 6 so that we won't sin is a wonderful thing. But having removed us so that Christ will live, you know, to give him that opportunity to live again after he died for us. What a deep, deep blessing that is. I mean, that was Paul's reason in Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but not I. Christ lives in me, and it was his, his acceptance of personal crucifixion was that Christ may live in him. Just like Jesus' acceptance of personal crucifixion was so that we might live. Isn't it funny? 
that he died that we might live. We don't do much with it. I'm talking about, you know, being alive, uh, not going to hell, being a Christian. In, In light of eternal reality, we don't do much with that. But we have the opportunity. We have the opportunity to do the greatest thing that we could to give back to Jesus what he gave to us. To, but, but see, we can't fully do that ourselves. We have to be crucified with him. We can't crucify ourselves. So we still have to accept his death. But now we're accepting his death as our death not just an identification of the old man and his death, but as a living reality so that Christ may live in us in a real way. I mean, how different would our lives be if Jesus actually lived in us? Well, I'm, I, I shudder to think of what you just thought of, but and here's why. Because... I would be more powerful. I would be more famous. I would be more, you know, of God, you know, with whatever, instead of I would be less because that's his nature. It's just a thought. And remember with me, since it's just coming from me, it's just a thought. All right. So this is, this is don't, don't you see how this would be important? I mean, to, to grasp this thing about a living lamb not fulfilling what God wanted, uh, to grasp that just carrying solid incense around in your pocket, if you, even you're a, you're a high priest, means nothing to God. Nothing. Little lambs in the field pff, means nothing. And, and that's why I said... In that sense, they're no different than a wolf puppy. You know, wherever you went in your mind, whether you're there or whatever, neither one of them are dead. Okay? And then Jesus of Nazareth, and that's what we want to get into a little bit more here. So let me read. The solid form of incense was needed, but it was the incense that was burned that was most important to God. Amen? Wasn't that the sweet savor? That's the thing that was precious to him. Again, I don't think God is into, you know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of that. I better not. I probably can't think of By the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. Um, God's not into... You know, oh, I really dig the smell of this, you know. Um, It really is nice. And so, you know, thanks, priest, for doing that for me, you know. No, that's that's not the deal. It is that in him, in his being, there is a tendency toward death so that life may come to someone else. I, um, I didn't know, I, I, trust me, today particularly, I mean, I barely got a shower and got here. Um, I, you know, I know that there are some people from out of town from several different states, actually, and I didn't know who was going to show up tonight because there was a potential of some people. And so, you know, in my, you know, uh, my hurriedness, because I didn't even get a chance to look at notes or, you know, I just prayed in the shower and said, oh, Lord, you know, you know, let what's, you know, let it be a blessing to those, you know, who are here. That they, they didn't come here just to come here, that they might get Jesus. And I won't tell you the full statement that the Holy Spirit made, but I'll tell you this part. 
uh, and this is, this is a, I just had an idea. This is, um, <laughs> this is a milder version of what he said. He said, um, he said, uh, well, isn't your first thought to minister to the Father? Which if Christ is formed in there, folks, that's your first thought. You know, wouldn't that be more akin to compassionate ministry than memorial ministry? When I thought it over, I said yes, that would be because the emphasis is on people. The emphasis is on the ministry instead of the Lord. And, um, <clears throat> and so don't misunderstand me. I don't believe there's any problem um, praying for people who come to hear you share, okay? All of you share, and, and you should do that. Uh, probably the main thing that was going on there was he's trying to teach me, and I want him to be on my case. I don't want him letting up. I constantly want to be made aware of the shortcomings where my religious mind rises up and rules and makes a decision and speaks and it's something contrary to the very life that I claim lives within me. And, I pr and one thing I do pray, I, I do, I pray way more now than I probably have ever in my life. And my prayers are all pretty much the same. Um, and, and I won't tell you what that is, but it, but those prayers have been arising because the Holy Spirit took me serious when I said, I'm, I don't want any more religious automatics popping out of me. I want life, and I mean it. And I told him this way, I mean it, and I mean it, I mean it. And I need you, and I said, I won't, be, I won't be this way unless the Holy Spirit reminds me of what is not Jesus in my life. And, you know, we go, well, are you talking about sin or a thought, bad thought? Or no, I'm talking about everything that we hold as good in religion. And to... to not automatically be religious, though I hate it. You know, I hate being religious. I, I don't like religion, but I'm religious. If it's not Christ, and it's not Randy just being off the wall or something, <laughs> it's religion. And I, I'm not. I'm not satisfied with that, and I'm not pleased with that. And I sense that the Holy Spirit is enjoying slamming into me. And I know most people would say, well, he's a, he's a dove, you know. Well, he's beating me to death, okay, with those wings. <laughs> but in a good way, in a wonderful way, in a wonderful way. And I am, I am enjoying um, fellowship. Uh, here's, the, here's the funny thing. I'm enjoying fellowship with the Holy Spirit the fellowship of the Spirit. I'm enjoying that because it always points to Christ, but in a real way. It's so real. It's so real Jesus. It's so not the Holy, well, the Holy Spirit said to me, you know, or showed me this in the scripture, and now I'm deep and special, you know. But rather, oh, my God. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me. Don't just reveal the contrast, but reveal the Son in me. Reveal the Son in me. Make it more real than I could ever imagine. And don't stop. And, and I, I think, I have a feeling he's not going to stop. Because I'm not, you know. So, that was fun. Let's take a break. <laughs>